today I have a new inverter to review. I've reviewed many inverters in the past, pure sine wave and modified sine wave, and today I have one that I've wanted to review for quite some time. There's a particular company who likes to sell their inverters on eBay. They usually use pretty girls as advertisements in the pictures in not so appropriate settings, and they are known for poor quality products. However, they do have very, very inexpensive pure sine wave inverters. Here I have a 5,000 watt pure sine wave inverter. It cost me $150. It's used, yes, but that's about the going rate for these. You can get these for about the same price as a broken inverter from a name brand. And we are going to take a look at this inverter today. The construction of this inverter is pretty typical. It's an extruded aluminum anodized clamshell case, dual battery posts, a large diameter fan, which I like, but it's a no-name fan, as you'd expect in this price range. And you can tell by just looking at the screws that most of the components are on the bottom. There's some sort of auxiliary board on top. Perhaps that is the output board. On this side, they have the standard outlets that you can use in just about any country in the world. I hate those, but that way they can make one unit and sell it to everybody. On off switch, and uh, just a couple of lights. It does say it's the 110 volt model, so hopefully it is, and 60 hertz at that. I really don't know. But it was sold to me from someone in the United States, so I would assume that it is. On the top, there is really very little information on this label. Pretty much says what it is. A power inverter PSW 5000 model. And also, it's nice of them to tell you that it is the best. So you really don't have to look any further. This is the best inverter. It says it right here. From PowerJack. Brought to you by PowerJack. Get the power and get jacked! Yeah! And moving on, this particular inverter was used in some sort of installation where the previous owner drilled a hole in it and did not use these outlets. They claim that they reconnected them. I don't really trust other people's electrical work just because, well, I probably shouldn't. Who knows how well a job they did. So I'm going to open this up and take a look at it before I even power it on. Also, I noticed that the inside is fairly dirty, and it looked kind of scary in there. So, we're going to open this unit up and take a look at the quality inside, as well as just its general condition, because it is used. As is usual for this type of inverter, you can just open up the case by removing uh, four to six screws. Usually, you just have to remove the screws that hold on the top, and then you can take off the top of the clamshell case. There's generally going to be wires connecting it, so uh, just be careful with that, and you can open it up and see what's inside. This particular unit has four screws on each side, and then the top should lift off like this. Uh, there's also some goop or something on this outlet. I have no idea why from the previous owner, but I'll take out those screws and then we'll look inside. And this is the inside of the PowerJack 5000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Here is the bottom half. And here is the top half. You can see that the top half has a lot of missing components. It looks like they use this same circuit board to do a transfer switch uh, version of this inverter. Uh, so that you can have AC power in and convert it to, I don't know, battery charger or something. Uh, but a transfer switch sort of setup. They obviously don't have that circuitry loaded. And that's fine to use the same board for both, but my main peeve here is that this is very clearly not a 5,000 watt inverter. I'm guessing it'll be about 2,500 watts when I actually test it out. And not only that, it says right here on the circuit board. I'm not sure if you can read it on camera, but 3,500 watt. Revision B. Same over here. 3,500 watts. Revision A. So, <clears throat> even, even when you open it up, it's very clear that it's not a 5,000 watt inverter. There's not enough components, they're not heavy enough, and it says right on it. In addition to that, it's fused at 480 amps. Clearly can't do 5,000 watts for any length of time. So that's disappointing in some ways, but expected in others. I did not expect it to be a 5,000 watt inverter. You can sell it for cheap if you just don't sell what you advertise. In many ways, the construction is pretty typical. I like the way they do the input power. It's uh, well done in that way. Nice big buses here. The transformers are very skimpy. They'll get quite hot under continuous load. The input capacitance is maybe adequate for a 2000 watt inverter, nothing more. 
they really should use more capacitors. However, they are 25 volt caps. They are a Chinese no-name cap, but they are 25 volts at least. These over here are actually a name brand capacitor, but it's interesting in that they are 125 volt rated. Now, 125 is about half of what you need. And I looked at the bottom of the circuit board and they actually have two separate input stages here. And these are in series. That is not a good setup for a variety of reasons. They should not have done it that way. It won't be reliable. But that's how they chose to do it. It's an interesting setup. I've never seen that before. Over here on the output board, they have the same brand name output capacitor, except this is 450 volts. 450 volts is a much better voltage to use. However, I noticed that this one is already swollen. Uh, so this probably needs to be replaced. There's a big bump on top and uh, that just doesn't seem safe. Also, the output stage is clearly not 5,000 watts. There are only four transistors on the output. That's only good for about 2,500 again. The control board that they use over here is some sort of, I don't know, canned kludge together control board. Uh, some of it is automated assembly, some is not. And overall, just a very cheap. Not a lot more to say about that. They put hot glue down all over the place to hold components down, which is just fine, but it looks like spider webs. So if you're seeing those, that's what that is. And I wouldn't even believe that this is a pure psi inverter at the moment, unless I saw these giant chokes. So, yeah, it's probably some sort of hybrid pure sign. We'll see about that. They do put a output filter in here for conducted emissions. I'm kind of surprised to see that. Uh, they claim that it's CE rated, but I highly doubt it. And let's take a look at the previous owner's electrical work to see if I was right to be skeptical. One more thing to mention, this inverter is not clean. Yeah, it's kind of dirty from the previous owner. Obviously it was stored in a garage or something like that. There is some corrosion and such in here, but just overall the cleanliness is poor. They uh, did not do a very good job in manuf manufacturing this unit. Um, and cleanliness is important to long-term reliability for corrosion reasons. But anyway, here are the outlets. The previous owner had cut these wires off and hardwired them up to something over here, which is fine, but I don't trust a previous owner's electrical work, and it uh, certainly doesn't look to be the best quality. Let's peel off some of this electrical tape and see what we're really dealing with. Here is one wire that goes to this outlet, and it does seem to be stuck in there pretty well, even though it looks a little ho- oh, I guess not. It just pulls straight out. Hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's not good. I assume the other ones will be the same. Who knows how they were from the factory, but it looks like, no, that one just falls out. Well, this would not have worked at all the way it was shipped to me. So I'm glad that I purchased this instead of somebody else because someone else might have burned their house down or killed themselves with this. Uh, take this tape off. Let's take a look at the other outlet quick. Oh, this one isn't even in to start with. It was already out when I got it. Wow. Anyway, so I have to completely redo these outlets, which isn't a whole lot of a loss. Over here we have the switch and the LEDs. These are all just hand soldered on. They didn't even uh, cut off the LED leads to make them to length. So, yeah. Not the best quality. I've seen similar quality in better name brands, but Overall, it's about what I expected from this. It's about one half the capacity that they advertise and the quality is poor. So I will take a look at improving these outlets and then we'll see if this thing actually powers up and works. And if it does, is it even pure sign? And a few entertaining things in here before we move on. This capacitor connected to the IC leads after it was inserted into a holder. Yeah. I don't know why they don't just solder these down to the board. Do they really fail so often that they need to make them removable? And over here on this control board, if I shine a light on it, maybe you can read the sticker on there. Hmm. Seal. Remove seal after washing. Well, they didn't remove the seal, but you know what? They didn't wash it either, so I guess they kind of followed instructions. Here's a control board of some sort over here by these massive chokes. To be honest, I have no idea what it does, but here it is, kind of interesting. They hot glued everything down, 
which is good, that helps for vibration, but a lot of the stuff is hand soldered on like this wire and done very poorly. That comes from this board over here. This is the main control board in this unit. And the uh, cleanliness is not very good as well as lots of solder blobs and other kludged on components. So overall not impressive. But to be fair, this is better quality than most of the AIMS inverters I have disassembled. I'm just going to take this opportunity to rip on AIMS because they are hands down the poorest quality I have ever seen. And I've seen multiple units from them. So, oh and take a look at this. Right here on these, EE4215-3.5 kilowatt. Hmm, yeah. You think this thing's actually rated for 3.5 kilowatts and not 5? And they just stuck a bigger label on to sell it for more money? Yeah, that's what I would bet. I'd also bet that it can't really do 3.5 kilowatts, because if it's rated for that, it can probably only do about 2.5. And, and just for fun, this is the remaining connection in the last outlet. And it just pulls out. Not connected at all. Wow, not good. So let's uh, make these wires safer and continue.